Jason. Welcome to Two Month Review, the weekly podcast brought to you by Open Letter and 3%, in which we take one giant book, break it down bit by bit, section by section, talk about it, analyze it, have fun, make jokes. I'm Chad Post from Open Letter Books, joined as always by Brian Wood, author of Joy Time Killbox. Hi, Chad. How are you doing? I got just was sitting outside my office for 45 minutes waiting for someone to come and let me in. Yeah, I, I got ran over by a bike in the park today. So oh, shit, really? At least, at least you didn't have that. And the worst part is it was my daughter that ran me over. So <laughs> <laughs> friendly fire. It'll, it'll make it easier to enact a punishment. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's a better chance of your daughter getting in trouble than the police officers who shot Brianna Taylor. Precisely, exactly. Two, I, only had, two. I only had a limp two miles home and yeah. run alive. So I've got that going for me for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're doing this season Ada or Arder or Ada or Arder by Vladimir Nabokov. How about you keep saying Ada and I'll just keep saying Ada just to, Ada, just Ada. to keep it weird. I think uh, I think Papa Nabokov would have liked that. <laughs> Everybody mispronouncing everything. <laughs> Everybody mispronounces everything. Yeah. I once I once listened to because I was like it's I it's Nabokov. I know that's how you're supposed to say it. And I was listening to invitation to a beheading as a audiobook and when they introduced it they're like invitation for a beheading written by vladimir nabokov and i was like that's not the part i thought i'd pronounced wrong <laughs> <laughs> that part was indisputable but no so anyways so we'll mispronounce a million more things we're going up to page yep. 180 today and what did you think of this section? This is going to be a shorter two-month review because I know Brian has a other obligation. So we're jumping in here just straight away. Um, I guess like if we're doing the like Roman Colosseum, this one would get a thumbs up for me. I'm not going to. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about you? What were, what were your initial impressions of it? This one's a little bit, this is, I thought this was interesting, but it, I like like the code. I like certain bits of it a lot, but as a yep. whole, it was just more of like, their sort of background and it moves so so just slightly into the future yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there was um i thought you would kind of get a kick out of um all the the poetry that's in it and how much it kind of like makes he's making fun of poetry and translation and um yeah. just i don't know i'm just amazed that these kids are like I assume they're what, like thirteen or fourteen during the. Well, depends on where you are. They're fourteen and eleven when they meet. When they meet, but when they're like discussing before, I guess before they're going to college, basically, and they're talking like PhDs of literature. Yeah, <laughs> just like, and botany. The only way to read Bruce. <laughs> yeah, it's like wow, man. I have a, I got a really shitty public education. No, dude, you just <laughs> were born on anti terra Yeah, you exactly. just stuck on Terra, where your souls go and you die. <laughs> But yeah, there's something just like like wildly humorous about like they're 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 young they're like very adolescent you know they're adolescent I mean they're kids having incest but they speak like they're like dukes and like dolphins and like you know like they're just <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, when I summer I like to take with me the the <laughs> plates of the original land grants to see where the borders are. I walk with my horse minion to check the borders. Oh my god! I find borders cumbersome. I'm more interested in the fauna. <laughs> you know, like, that's what they're discussing as they're having incest with one another. Like it's. I like how you call it having incest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just having sex or having incest. Like it's a comp. Like it's like you're ordering off the menu or something. <laughs> yeah. Like I looked that up once on Urban Dictionary, and I'm not that flexible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I just keep finding it, um, just like there's a, there's a joy and a delight and a humor with the way he's, um, tackling all of this. Yeah. Um, absolutely. There are so many, there are so many good little bits about incest in here mm -hmm. <laughs> that are like, that are really, That's a really weird line to take out of context. Like, <laughs> I really hope. We're not getting somebody joining us for the first time, or yeah. you know, that's the <laughs> get ready. That's the jewel that they pluck. There's a lot of great incest lines in this uh, this chapter. There's some solid. There's some solid incest talk. Um, seriously, there is. Like the on page 133 is where it starts, and it's got so one of our listeners name check this, but 
at the bottom of 133, and this is why I feel, feel like we should start here. But as Judge Bald pointed out already during the albino, albino riots of 1835, which automatically it's from there. Yeah, he's, he's having some fun. Practically all North American and Tartar agriculturists and animal farmers used inbreeding as a method of propagation that tended to preserve and stimulate, stabilize, even create a new favorable characteristics in a race or strain unless practiced too rigidly. If practic practiced rigidly, incest led to various forms of decline, to the production of cripples, weaklings, muted mutates, and finally to hopeless sterility. <laughs> so they have like a whole section in here. This uh, exact uh, section on mine. <laughs> But I'm glad you brought that up because that's something I really honed in on. <laughs> well, it's weird because it's creating this sense of this other world's like, well, I mean, okay. I I assume this. I assume that this is like an imaginary or made up version of like where, how incest became blocked or like banned in anti-Terra. But this could be real for all I know, except for the albino riots. I don't think that's real. Well, I, I thought it was interesting Um I was just maybe it's just the uh, the political environment we're in or what's going on. But I like the the idea of on the American frontier there was really like no choice but inbreeding mm -hmm. um, to like propagate and take over the land in some ways. And yeah. just you know, there's like the obviously there's the jokes about in the South sleeping with your sister or kissing cousins or that sort of thing. But like that that cliche has to come from somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, or, <laughs> it's like oh, I'm uncomfortable just trying to think about it. But um, but it, it like it makes sense in if in, in like a frontier type of environment, you have limited options of how to keep the species going, right? Yeah. And then in this, I like when they're talking about like divinity, and it makes you think of like royal blood or the way like how a pharaoh would um, keep things very close within the family or family bloodlines. And then with, with this family tree, it feels very royal as well, right? It's like a double helix. Cause like, their, <laughs> yeah. Their, yeah. Their uncle is their dad's brother. It's so right. hard. He, he makes it so twisted. Like this, everything you, everything I'm reading in this, it feels like it's, like it's writhing and it's twisting and it's braiding and it's moving and it's changing. Yeah. Right. Um, there, there's a, there's transformation all over the place um, so far in this book, which makes it like extremely difficult, but a delight to just kind of like keep going. Oh, oh, Isaac drew you something. Oh, very cool, very pretty. It's she said it's Rapunzel. Okay, we're we're, we're live right now. Can we we can show them as soon as we're done. Okay. <laughs> but I like that Rapunzel. That's super good. It's one of the best drawings yet. This just occurred to me. As you're saying that, so this part about the, the yeah, I mean, there's just funny bits in here too um, about the about breeding woollier sheep or whatnot. Yeah, and how they they ban it, the deliberate suppression of a possible benefit for the sake of avoiding a probable evil, um, and various other stuff. But one thing that just occurred to me is the idea of like you're you're saying the frontier, but it's also an Adam and Eve problem, right? Correct. Like, that like Adam and Eve have. Cain and Abel, and then where do anyone else come from? All that kind of stuff. And it occurred to me that like Adam and Eve isn't that far from Ada and, and Van. Yeah. Like, well, that, we were bringing up last week too, um, discussing like for me, it felt it's very Eden esque, if, if that's a word. Yeah, it is. Um, where they're they're in this idyllic garden, and then he's like the snake, right? He's this yeah. this satanic figure that spoils this. Beautiful paradise. Uh, He's a snake with a, a with the River Nile. Written. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and, and it's also like the you know biblically the seed of sin coming through man and through sex and through propagation. Like so, um, like you can go to the importance of the Messiah being born of a virgin so that it can't have the sin of man in its bloodline or whatever. But uh, yeah, there's definitely this Garden of Eden thing going on. There's this sin mm -hmm. thing going on, and we keep getting. Um, Divinity, transfiguration, yeah. um, all this heaven and hell uh, language in here as well with Terra and anti-Terra. So I mean, yeah, yeah, because it is in this section where she says something about like Terra is where your soul goes. Yeah, yeah, and then even too within the family, there's like people named Demon. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, like as if that was, like didn't hit us over the like wasn't <laughs> subtle enough with all the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and here's Demon. Yeah, very true. Yep. 
Absolutely. Yeah. This this one also, that same section though, but not to hammer this home anymore, but not about the incest part, but right afterwards it says, do, 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 journalists made a lot of the wedding. Uh, what are we doing here? Whatever. There's a wedding um, and the shower gifts to well wishers. And on the same day, Gamaliel, then a stout young senator, thumped a conference table with such force that he hurt his fist and demanded a retrial and capital punishment. Um, that's the second time that this Gamaliel has shown up as if it's like, as if he is a like leader, world leader, terror leader, mm -hmm. North America leader. I don't know. And does reference the senator there. And that's that's not dissimilar from what uh, in Ben Sinister, there's the, the there's like a um, authoritarian Trumpian figure that takes over the government. I can't remember his name right now, but it's like, uh, it's something weird too. I think they nickname him Toad, but I don't think that's his real name. Um, but it's also like a strange kind of like gross sounding name, like Gamaliel. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm saying that right. Um, it sort of symbolizes or sounds like an evil something. But it's interesting. I, one of my other, the sex parts in this one, brilliant again. Yes. Um, like in the, <laughs> like all the different games that they play with this, one of my favorite Bits is that they finally get into the the porno pics and they're like the collection of Uncle Dan's Oriental erotica prints turned out to be artistically second rate and inept calisthenically. <laughs> <laughs> it's like these fourteen and eleven year olds are like, this shit ain't good enough. We <laughs> I don't One, more get dirtier. Yeah, the kids these days have no idea like what it was like to not have any option for pornography, right? Like. <laughs> the only option for pornography was going to the local woods until you found a Playboy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A discarded Playboy from a, a vagrant. <laughs> um, sleeping materials. You look like you're puzzling something out. Oh, no. Um, I really liked where it seemed like in these chapters, too, um, Ada's, Ada, sorry, Ada's notes get a little snarkier and, and kind of starts punching back a little bit or making fun of whatever Van's grandiose idea is. Like she, yeah. she keeps kind of uh, cutting them down. Um, and I, I think we see that beginning at the end of 20. Mm -hmm. uh, you kissed and nibbled and poked and prodded and worried me there so much and so often that my virginity was lost in the shuffle. But I do recall definitely that by midsummer, the machine which our forefathers called sex was working as smoothly as later in 1888, et cetera, darling. Marginal note in red ink. Yeah, absolutely. And then later, there's a really good one where saying something like, uh, I couldn't remember quite what happened or whatever. She's like, trust me, I don't remember. I don't, it was completely forgettable. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's like, we don't we remember what we talked about. And she's like, it did not matter. Yeah. <laughs> that is irrelevant. She is, does have the one nice thing, though, too. It comes at the very that, end, right? Isn't it the end of, Oh, well, oh, here's the other mean one. Yeah, 26. I suggest omitting this little chapter altogether. <laughs> yes, that's the one with all of the games and the note. Like, how clever am I? Here's our codes. Here's our cipher. Here's, you know, yeah. and it goes on and on. And she's like, eh, just cut this all out. This is. One transformation part. There's two things that come to mind. We were talking about the transmogrification or trans. Um, transformations and in a biblical sense, but it also is probably in a butterfly sense or could be the way she's a natural scientist. The butterfly stuff is all the Nabokov. They use um, enchantment, he uses enchant specifically in this chapter. And like, I, there's that sort of idea. I don't know that he would, I don't, I don't know like exactly, like I haven't done a, a thesis on Nabokov's butterflies, nor have I read the book called Nabokov's butterflies, but there's the idea that like, they took this thing as young kids and then it's been transformed. It's being transformed into art now. This really horrible thing, this like caterpillar, whatever, to, to make the metaphor, this caterpillar being their like incest is cocooned, they're wrapped off, and now it's being transformed into this like elegant, beautiful book. And like that's what she's sort of poking at and the like the unreliability of it. That the real thing was, or not the real, but the thing was just this kind of gross cocoon. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really stretch. That's a stretch. Yeah, I mean, you could you could say with a name like Ada, Ada, um, <laughs> like 
the A being one wing, the D being the body, the A being the next wing, perhaps, because you see a lot of the, you know, uh, kind of palindrome-esque language in it, which kind of I might allude to butterflies. But um, I really honed in on with this as well is um, all the like flowers and botany. Yeah. Um, with that, you know, literally being butterfly food, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which anybody yeah. that anybody that collects butterflies, I assume, is going to have to know what the preferred foods for butterflies are as part of the predatory nature, like to 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 find them. And so I find it really interesting. The um, there's always there's always seem to be a lot of flowers around. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. It's very true. Flowers and poems. So many poems. Plus, too, like not to be all like you know, like O'Keefe about it, but um, some of the, I, I was looking up some of the flowers that are um, in these chapters. And I mean, they're very sexual um, in the in the way they appear as well. Some of the flowers yeah. that he's choosing, you know, not necessarily orchids or anything, but like there's, you know, they're very um, like sexual and alluring in the way they look. And so I think, I think he's very careful with what he's choosing um, as they're going through their their passions and stuff. There's a way that that too is sort of like the the natural, like the the natural side of things, than than and her being like a naturist, and saying like their their attraction and their like sex is unnatural because of the societal part of it and because of the knowledge of who they were. But to them, they're just like too innocent, or the way that Van's portraying it is they're like two innocent kids who just like wanna have have sex. Yeah, there was one um, on page one forty eight. Um, mm -hmm. That jumped out for me. What picture do we have now? What is this? <gasps> this is a picture of a guy named Eugene. <laughs> In case you're wondering. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great picture. I appreciate that one. Thanks, Chad. I think Chad always wanted a picture of Eugene. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost the page. It was uh, 148? Do you know what I'm talking about or no? Is it the one that says it? Uh, Ada said officially we are maternal cousins. And yeah, yeah. Cousins can marry by special decree if they promise to sterilize their first five children. But moreover, the father-in-law of my mother was the brother of your grandfather, right? That's where I was just like, what the shit? What? Yeah. <laughs> and then a little bit further down, physically, mm -hmm. she continued, we are more like twins. Oh, yeah. Yep. And cousins. And twins or even siblings can't marry, of course, or will be jailed and altered if they persevere. Unless they're especially decreed cousins. Yep. So I thought it was interesting when um, physically she thinks they're more like twins. Yeah. Um, There's that A V, like V being the opposite of A as well. Like yeah. Those things linking together. <laughs> yeah, I read Da Vinci Code, so I know that's the uh, that's Illuminati stuff. Oh shit! Is it really? I didn't even know that. <laughs> no, I, I think like. Uh, <laughs> What is one is a female sign? One is a male sign? Like uh, I only watch Tom Hanks movies. Yeah, it's like I only watch Bosom Buddies. I didn't even get to the. He's he's a film actor. <laughs> he's, he's, the Burbs is really like the top of his game, though. Not to chase a rabbit, but what happened to the good old days where you go to a pitch meeting for a a, a sitcom? And like, we'll tell you about the sitcom. So it's two dudes. And they're going to dress up like women so they can live in a women's dorm. And they're going to become attracted to all the women. But here's where it gets complicated <laughs> because they can't <laughs> let people know they're, they're dudes or they'll get kicked out of the all women's dorm. That sounds brilliant. Let's do it. <laughs> we'll have some shower comedy, some bathroom. <laughs> what a terrible. And you know, it would make it be better if we got Billy Joel to do this song for the beginning of it. Did he really do that? Yes. Oh my God, I didn't realize that. Oh, it's the worst, one of the like best worst um, intros for a sitcom. It has like juggling, them being friends. When they go shopping at the grocery store, the guy, one guy just throws all the oranges in the air and, the, and Tom Hanks has to go behind him and catch them all in a paper bag. <laughs> they're just living their best life while they <laughs> lie to everybody and, <laughs> and live in an all women's dorm. You crazy. <laughs> 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 Billy Joel and the story songs. Um, the uh, yeah, I guess how many episodes are of that? Uh, I have no idea. Thirty-seven. Wow, I made it a lot longer than I thought. <laughs> Fourteen. 
<laughs> Eventually, they got found out that, yeah, the uh, six foot five looking lady with the deep voice was not actually. <laughs> if there's, I can, I'm willing to bet that if Bosom Buddies was on a streaming platform, it's been erased. <laughs> Probably. For yeah. like, for like anti trans, like yeah. jokes and sentiments. It got replaced by Cuties on Netflix. Yeah. Have you watched that yet? No, but I've heard it's great. Okay. I haven't watched it either. I heard it's, yeah. Interesting. I know that the, I know the Netflix, the controversy of people wanting to cancel for it, but people I know that saw it are like, it's really, I mean, it's a really good movie. Oh, I don't know what it it's is. Not like, it's not what you think it's, it's like meme, like memes. And so I, I just learned out what a meme was not too long ago. And so I'm really catching up on all the memes. It's where Spider-Man points at Spider-Man. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a meme is just a colloquialism in picture form. No, but I mean, uh, Bosom Buddies, I guess. There, there's a lot of transformation going on, um, like big time. I'm, I'm expecting to see a lot more. I think um, he's really set up some some avenues. I'm, I'm really curious to see where we go, where we explore. But mm -hmm. I'm going to save one section because it's my favorite quote. Okay. And I think it goes to like, uh, talks, speaks to something that Rodrigo like slightly referenced last week. But we do get a little bit of a, a time for them. Like it says like how long, so they depart from each other. They yeah. stay apart for X period of time. Where is that? I'm missing it. Um, but they, it does explain like what their separation was and how they don't see each other for a number of years. Uh -huh. um, but they have during that time, they create their own way of writing to each other that is includes a code. And that is chapter, what chapter is it? 25? Yeah, 25 has the first reference to it on one page 157, where Van's leaving. He's leaving on this September morning. The summer of 1884 is over. And he's like, I need to go in and get some, I don't know, mushrooms, whatever he needs, um, into the woods. So he stops. And then it says, this is, and this attire, so it says, Van plunged into the dense undergrowth. He wore a silk shirt, a velvet jacket, black breeches, riding boots with star spurs. And this attire was hardly convenient for making in a natural bower of aspens, lexic music zone, after which she said, yes, so as not to forget, here's the formula for our correspondence. Learn this by heart and then eat it up like a good little spy. Then in traditional Nabokovian fashion, you get the answer to what was happening later, which is also what uh, Frazan does, where on page 160 and 61, um, in chapter 26, it explains their period of their separations, which is basically four years, from September 1884 to June 1888. And they create a code in which you replace the letters of the word with the letter that comes the number of letters after the total number of letters in that word. So if there are four letters in the word, you go from four letters from each of the, the letters in that word. So love becomes P -Z P -S -Z -I, Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I looked it up. And so that first one, the first. On 157. On 157, yeah. that explains it is okay. So it decodes. So it, although the passage, this is from the Ada Auckland annotations. Although the passage looks at first if as, as if it is too licensed to print undraped, it decodes as merely making his way through the brush and crossing a brook to reach Ada and a natural bower of aspens, they embraced. Tadashi Wakashima of the Kyoto Reading Circle suggested that italicized words could, all, could be read also after the co comic disappointment of the decoding as an ordinary pornographic metaphor of their sexual intercourse. When this chapter appeared in serial form in Playboy in April 1969, <laughs> that coded text appeared only decoded. Uh, da, da, da. Since the description of the code was not included in Playboy's section, interesting. It's really hard. Not, I had a Pavlovian response to say "nice." I know, and I did it. I almost like felt like I was going to vomit to stop myself. Oh. <laughs> like, just don't do it. Just don't do it. There's that, no need for that. One of my other favorite bits is where. What a great, what, what a great little, again, like little like game where you think it's going to be something salacious and it's not. Yeah. I mean, isn't that kind of the point of like a lot of his, I, there are a lot of ideas about like codes and meaning. It's like, 
that idea that you see patterns and see meaning within those patterns. And yet when you deduce those patterns, frequently they're just not that important or they're random. And like Nabokov seems to have like such fun with this throughout all of his books of like hinting at this like grand thing, if you can just crack the code. And then when you crack the code, it's like he walked through the woods. Yeah, and he embraced the person he yeah. loved. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I'm glad I decoded. It's like the uh, that Christmas story where he gets the decoder ring and it's like all this anticipation for it and he decodes it and it's like, what, that's all it says? Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> there is a great line when it's talking about the codes of, there's an awful moment in popular books on cosmic theories that breezily begin with the plain straightforward chatty paragraphs when there suddenly start to sprout mathematical formulas, which immediately blind one's brain. <laughs> it's like, this is, so he's even like poking fun at his own doing of this code and creating of this code, which gets like increasingly more complicated to the point of like absurdity. And that's when Ada's like, no, this, I suggest omitting this entirely. <laughs> Screw this chapter. <laughs> and then they do have another encounter. Um, they, she's at school, he's at boarding school, but they're able to go meet with like an intermediary to watch over them. Yeah, and, and this is where he's like the film expert, right? Yeah, and the Proust expert and yes. Everything expert? Everything expert. Captain Man, and, he's like Captain Mansplainer and <laughs> and uh, Ada and the uh, roommate are just kind of like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's like, yeah, who cares? It even references unfair son, Grand Joyce after doing one's petite Proust in Ada's lovely or Ada's lovely hand. But yeah, it's it's totally referencing the Joyce and Proust of it all right there, which is fun. But they and nothing happens. Like they don't get to have anything. Then they never they never invite him back. Because do you do you take that he was uh, filled with jealousy when he was there? And I think he thinks that Cordula was is Ada's lover lesbian lover yeah and I, I know he brings it up in film and saying like he'd be fine with it or whatever but it's like i think he has a mention that it's the fellows that he'll kill yeah yeah so like there's like this evil like just terrible evil jealousy that he's kind of hiding and it's almost like an omen of what what kind of monster he is yeah yeah As if we don't think he's monstrous enough already there's even more where there's yeah like definitely a possessiveness within there yeah and like yeah i mean he's writing their story too like it is a the book is mansplaining as a whole <laughs> yeah. like, it's basically he's like yeah no this is how it was and she's like no kind of thanks for reminding me Petite Tidid is really funny though. I have to give you that. I have to give you that for a pun. That's 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 solid. But they go back through and they try and like figure out if they had possibly met at other points in time too. Like mm -hmm. if they're they had run parallel before their meeting when they were on their different vacations with their family or in their different places, which is pretty fun. Um, and then there's like the great what I found I found really entertaining actually was the whole section about Dick. Um, the the card sharp that yeah the, like the magician there's the, yeah the magician is like what's his name Puckett yeah and then okay. uh, yeah the guy that cheats at cards <laughs> which is and teaches Van how to be really good at like stacking decks and like doing all the 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 tricks and then Van gets to meet this kid named Dick uh, whom they who whom we shall call Dick <laughs> his name is not Dick he's just a Dick. And he's like trying to cheat by like getting reflecting surfaces all around so he can see people's cards. And Van figures it out and decides to screw him. And so he does really hard um, and takes away all his money, blah, blah, blah. I like that as like a weird set piece. I'm not sure though, like what it really means. Like within here, it's like the first time that something's like, okay, this is different. This is just an adventure of his. And like maybe showing like his, vind his vindictiveness or ability to like enact revenge. So he doesn't also he doesn't take anything. He gives the money back to the French people. Yeah, it, it kind of had like this, I don't know, it is a little bit more reminiscent of maybe like Lolia with um traveling. Like you get these places in the West, they go to like um 
like the Indian reservation area. They go to Telluride, Colorado. They go to yeah. like, there's like this grand west western um, travels with his father, right? Yeah. Because I don't know, was his mother in that section? Or she's in, that, the she's in the hospital always. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she's alive somewhere. Because there was that weird line where it's like Aqua. I don't know how she was alive, but yeah, Aqua was still alive <laughs> somehow, somewhere. <laughs> Magically, like she's still around. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why she's there at all. What but a, what, a, what a loving son. <laughs> she's, she's all living up on Terra. Whatever the fuck she's doing. Yeah, it is interesting. That this is a Western movement one too. I hadn't thought of that. And like that kind of wild west, like the the card, the card and the cheating, the cheating, and the... the sort of danger of it, the like having to be a magician. But the magician thing also then is an enchanter idea. And enchant enchanting is what runs throughout all of like his later works, is of like the narrator, and the whole point of this is to enchant you. Like the, mm -hmm. the artist artist then the narration is is meant to be an enchanting device. And so, and that's referenced in here. And that is a magician is like essentially like that kind of trickery, but through like a narrative that people watch, you watch a story and you're into it, you're enthralled, but you're being enchanted because it's not real. There's a trick. And it's sort of like, it's sort of like when you fall into like, into the Humbert Humbert thing of like feeling like Humbert Humbert isn't evil. He's trying yeah. to convince you he's not evil. He's yeah. enchanting you. Which is which is like very satanic, right? A, a, a great deceiver. A great deceiver, yeah. Yeah. All so much. Well, I know you have to get going. So you want to do your favorite line? I have a long one. A long one? Okay. Um, mine, I'll pick on page uh, 155. Okay. I'll try not to butcher the French pronunciations too much. <laughs> Should have not done it, but it's a, at the bottom of uh, 155. Um, do you want a sprinkle of cinnamon on your lot caille? I hope that's how you say it. Ask Marina. You know Belle, turning to La Vier. She used to call it sanded snow when she was a baby. She was never a baby, said Belle emphatically. She could break the back of her pony before she could walk. I wonder, asked Marina, how many miles you rode to have our athlete drain so thoroughly? Only seven, replied Ada, with a munch smile. I like that too. <laughs> like that quite a bit. It's like all these coy little games, man. Mine is long, and it refers, I believe, to what Rodrigo had hinted at of reading parts at the end about Van's beliefs of space time. So mm -hmm. on page 153, they're talking about their various things in the past, where they might have been, how they could have possibly seen each other. And it says, but as Van casually directed the searchlight of back thought into that maze of the past where the mirror line narrow paths not only took different turns, but used different levels. As a mule drawn cart passes under the arch of a viaduct along which a motor skims by, he found himself tackling in so vague and idle fashion, the science that was to obsess his mature years, problems of space and time, space versus time, time twisted space, space as time, time as space, and space breaking away from time in the final tragic triumph of human cog cogitation. Cog ah, cog ah, cogitation. I am because I die. Wow. That's an, and I, I think that that's a hint, but I think that that's, I think that's a really cool passage to begin with. Um, and the, the inversion of like, I think therefore I am, I think yeah. I am because I die is a good marker too. That's that's my all my points for this one. <laughs> no, I like that. Um, I thought it was interesting too, though. By the time we get to the to the end, it was a really great place to stop on one eighty, because again, as we were saying, with um, Ada kind of poking fun at him and delete this chapter. I don't remember this at all. Um, like that's kind of not how it was. And then she says by the end of it. Um, you know, that's my favorite chapter up to now, Van. I don't know why, but I love it. You can keep your Blanche and her young man's embrace, but that does not matter. Yeah, I really like that too. It is like a nice stopping point. Yeah. It worked out really well. Cool. So where are we going to next? Next week, we will cover from page 181 through 235. <clears throat> we're still, I just checked in. We're still in part one up until October 21st. No, sorry, October 14th. We're 
October 14th is when we'll start reading part two, uh -huh. which is, you know, three weeks from now. So there's still a lot of part one to go. And I, I'm very curious. I really like this. And I, I mean, I like all of his books and I find it's super engaging to read in like little bits and pieces, like read a chapter or two every night and like really take the time. Yeah. Because so much of this is like rereading. I reread these sentences so many times it feels like. So it's so easy to get lost. Like even the one that I read, it's almost easier to read the space time thing uh, aloud than it was to read it on the page visually. Well, that's the eye rolling Nobukov quote, right? There's, there's no such thing as reading. It's re like it's rereading. It's re and that's, I'm worried that this is a book I'm going to have to reread. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a book man. <clears throat> Which I'm curious about. Like I haven't picked, I haven't listened to it, but I have it. Cool. But anyways, okay. Well, I'll, we'll let you go for now. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll be back next week with the next chunk. And until then, I don't know. Stay safe. Burn down Louisville? Question. <laughs>